Well, hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, and I'm here to talk today about the pandemic that we are facing, the number one concern from a health perspective on the planet, what the World Health Organization calls the number one cause of death on our planet right now, and that is the pandemic of chronic degenerative diseases. These are things like type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, other forms of heart disease, Alzheimer's, several forms of cancer. These are the causes of death that uh, are the things that we really need to pay attention to. And these are all, at their core, metabolic issues. They are problems that arise when our metabolism is disturbed. And as you all know, I've been writing quite a bit these days, writing books and uh, blogs, etc., about the important role of uric acid as it relates to our metabolic health. And I'd like to bring you up to date in terms of one of the most recent uh, articles that appeared that looked at uric acid in metabolism and asked the question, does uric acid actually play a definitive role? Let's take a look at some of the recent literature that shows this relationship then between uric acid uh, and the metabolic syndrome and in fact, various components of the metabolic syndrome uh, that are certainly very important as they relate to risk for various chronic degenerative conditions uh, like Alzheimer's, coronary artery disease, even some forms of cancer and certainly uh, diabetes. Uh, this study asked the question, uric acid in metabolic syndrome does uric acid have a definitive role? And they begin the paper by looking at the associations uh, between hyperuricemia, meaning elevation of the uric acid, uh, and various uh, problems that are, are certainly quite common, metabolically based uh, issues like hypertension, heart failure, stroke, uh, obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, and of course type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, meaning problems with uh, the various fats in the bloodstream, chronic kidney disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and various forms of cardiovascular disease. And in addition, in the uh, study, in the paper, uh, they call attention to the fact that this whole notion of elevated uh, uric acid or hyperuricemia, that the prevalence of that is increasing in our modern Western world. And they indicate that this increase is going to continue as more people adopt a, what they called a Western lifestyle. And I'd like to highlight that because it's so fundamentally important because what they've just done for us is they've then connected very important dots between this Western lifestyle and hyperuricemia or elevated uric acid and these various problems that we've just talked about. And I think this is a very, very important connection for us because yeah, it's great to understand this, but it opens the door for us to intervene by dealing with this hyperuricemia, asking what is it in our modern Western lifestyle that is progressively increasing uric acid and therefore uh, uh, likely leading to these associated issues, the hypertension, uh, the, the cognitive issues, Alzheimer's, dementia, obesity, etc. Now, uh, in this uh, interesting paper, they presented uh, an overview diagram of uh, the mechanisms that have been delineated that relate uric acid to all kinds of things like mitochondrial damage, uh, inflammation, increased reactive oxygen species, or free radical mediated stress. A very complicated uh, diagram, I'll, I'll grant you that. So uh, I all, always like to simplify things. So let's just make it a little easier for us all and describe how uric acid is related to some fundamental mechanisms that threaten our health. And they include the increase of nitric oxide, uh, rather the inhibition of nitric oxide, the inhibition of a very important chemical, nitric oxide, that we need to ensure good blood supply to the heart, to the brain, uh, to the kidneys. We need nitric oxide to function as well because when nitric oxide is not functioning as well as it should, it leads to insulin resistance that raises blood sugar and ultimately culminates in a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Increased uric acid is associated with increasing inflammation. 
Increased inflammation is a cornerstone mechanism in things like coronary artery disease, uh, problems with the immune uh, system, and certainly senile dementia of the Alzheimer's type as well. Now here's a little technical gem, and that is that uh, uric acid, when it's elevated, inhibits AMPK. AMP kinase, adenosine monophosphate kinase. Uh, I mention it because many of you may be aware of AMPK. We want to keep AMPK active. When AMPK is active, it helps us burn fat. It reduces our formation of new blood sugar called gluconeogenesis. And it's really one of our main goals. It's why we exercise. Exercise is a powerful tonic to increase AMP kinase, but elevated uric acid reduces that. When uric acid is elevated, it reduces something called autophagy. Autophagy is a mechanism whereby our bodies are able to first recognize and secondly get rid of damaged cellular components. Elevated uric acid increases what's called gluconeogenesis, uh, the creation of glucose in our livers, uh, which by and large is something we don't need. It increases ROS, reactive oxygen species, the formation of what are called free radicals. And finally, uric acid directly damages our mitochondria. So these are things to consider. Uh, in addition, uh, we should look at the, then the inputs for elevated uric acid. Uh, we know that tumor lysis syndrome, in other words, when our bodies are breaking down some sort of cancerous tumor that can raise uric acid because it raises purines. We know alcohol metabolism increases uh, uric acid as well. Intake of foods that are rich in purines, the breakdown products of DNA and RNA, and also age, obesity, and kidney disease are associated with increased uric acid. But how wonderful that finally they mention that a high fructose diet, increased consumption of fructose, relates to increased levels of uric acid. And in conclusion, these authors, again publishing in May of 2022, concluded that uric acid, which was once forgotten, did not attract much attention except for gout and kidney stones, has been shown to be one of the most important metabolic agents by the findings of numerous studies conducted in recent years. Again, really validating the central role of uric acid elevation uh, in causing metabolic mayhem. Well, I believe these authors made it very clear that uric acid is something that we need to pay attention to, especially in the context of regaining and preserving our metabolic health. I want to just read to you the final paragraph of their conclusion one more time. Uric acid, which was once forgotten, it did not attract much att attention with the exception of gout and kidney stones, has been shown to be one of the most important metabolic agents by the findings of numerous studies conducted in recent years. Yes, uric acid is not the end all, but certainly a very, very powerful new tool that we have in our toolbox to regain and maintain metabolic health. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back soon. Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.